Hi, and welcome back to the channel. We're going to be talking about the new introductions to Streamlit 1.10, 1.10, specifically the Streamlit pages. Now, with this update, you can forget everything that you know about Streamlit, or maybe not everything, but a good deal about some of the more complex things we used to have to do. Now, what is Streamlit pages? This new introduction allows for you to easily switch between different components within your application. To do this in the past, imagine an application that would have multiple different components to it, such as the Digital Alkaline project. If we remember from about a year ago, I built a Digital Humanities project in 48 hours. Now, it wasn't perfect, it wasn't complete, but we had the skeletal uh, framework, if you will, of a Digital Humanities project really kind of completed. And that went from everything from grabbing the data online to cleaning it up to introducing some spacey components, some classical language toolkit components for named entity recognition, and most importantly, developing a front end user interface. And for that video, we used Streamlit. And if you remember, in order to do the complex things of the app, such as switching between things like the database and reading individual letters from Alcuin, we had to have a drop down menu. And to make that really work effectively, we had a very long Python script that was the Streamlit app. And when a user changed the select down menu, it would switch to a different component of the app. This is relatively clunky, and it doesn't allow for you to write code in a compartmentalized way very efficiently or effectively. What Streamlit Pages allows for you to do is to have each of those individual components be a self-contained Python Streamlit script. And each of those individual pages will have its own code, its own caching, etc. So it allows for you to develop a really robust and complex front-end user interface with multiple Python scripts, with one script functioning as the home page. Now this means that a application like the Digital Alcuin project no longer would need to be hundreds or thousands of lines of code with a, a set of large conditionals based on a drop-down menu. Instead, you can have these individual components be their own pages within the Streamlit Pages subfolder. And that makes your app development a lot easier, a lot more compartmentalized, and a lot cleaner. It also makes debugging a lot simpler, and it makes upgrading different components in your app a lot easier because you can upgrade individual components within each subsection or each page of your application. So I know that's a big overview of what Streamlit Pages is. Let's go ahead and jump into Atom and our browser to see how this works in practice. And we're going to make a relatively simple app in this video, but stay tuned because in the coming weeks, I'm going to show you how to use the top to vec library and have an up and running top to vec application in Streamlit in very short order. So now that we have Atom open, we need to do a couple things to get started. The very first thing that we need to do is we need to upgrade our Streamlit library. So to do this in the command line, we can say pip streamlit pip install streamlit dash dash upgrade. And when you execute this command, you're going to upgrade your streamlit to the new version of streamlit 1.10. And to make sure we can type in pip show streamlit. And this will ensure that our streamlit version is appropriate. And it is in fact streamlit 1.10. And we can see this under version right here. So now that we know that everything works correctly, let's pop in over to Atom real fast and start creating the hierarchy that we expect. Now for this video, just ignore this .get and the .get attributes. I've got this as a Git repository so that I can push this to GitHub and you all will have access to it. The first thing that we need to do is we wanna make a folder and we're gonna call this folder pages. And this is gonna be where our sub pages of our app sit. Before we do that, we need to make a new file and we're gonna call this home with a capital H pi.py. You can call this whatever that you like. I am breaking standard convention here and using capital H home.py because this is going to be the way that it displays within Streamlit natively. So let's go ahead and get home up and running. So I'm going to say Streamlit run home with a capital H here dot pi. And this is going to execute the streamlit run command, which is going to load everything up on localhost. Now I want to draw attention to this bit of code right here, which might be new to you if you haven't upgraded streamlit recently. This is says that we are essentially going to be using multiple threads on our computer. I've got 16 cores that I can use. And so it's using eight of those, or sorry, 16 threads, and it's using eight of those right now. And so what I've got is our streamlit app right here, I'm going to bring this over here. So it looks a little easier to follow along. And let's go ahead now and start working with our home.py file. With every Python script that you do, you always need to do import streamlit as st. 
And that's going to import all the streamlit library for us. And so I can say st.title home page, and I can execute that. We'll hit rerun. And we see that home page is now loaded up here on the Streamlit application. But that's not what this video is about. This video is about how to do multiple pages on your application. To do that, we're going to use this pages subfolder. So I'm going to add a new file, and I'm going to call this about.py. Again, a capital A. And we notice instantly that our Streamlit application has updated. This is because we have now populated the pages, which means that our pages are now being loaded up on this sidebar. And so once again, I'm going to import Streamlit as ST. You have to do this for each of your Python files. And then I'm going to do st.title about page. And so now when I save this, I can switch over and load back. And we've got about page now appearing right here. So this is the power of Streamlit pages now. You can have a multi-page app without having to have large conditionals and a drop-down menu on the side. I think there were some third-party libraries out there for a while to support this. They weren't exactly the best. They were kind of clunky. This is smooth. It works natively with Streamlit 1.10 going forward. Once you've upgraded to the current version, you'll be able to do this. And you'll be able to switch between different components of your application really easily. So things like the Digital Alquin project that had those eight different features on the application won't have to have a large conditional on a drop down menu. Instead, they can appear right over here in this pages subfolder. So that's all I'm going to talk about in this video. As always, thank you so much to all my Patreon supporters who get a lot out of this channel. Um, if you do get a lot out of this channel, please do consider supporting it financially with Patreon or YouTube members. You can find the links for those in the description down below. Everything I do on this channel will always stay free, including all of the textbooks that I put out and all the videos that I put out as well. Your contributions help keep this free for everyone for the future. Thank you so much for listening.